All right, so uh, when I install the WordPress plugin, uh, this e-commerce plugin, it gave me a lot of things. You may have seen a little pop-up that tells you something about a new feature. If you've got the pop-up, you can just dismiss it. If you already dismissed it, great. But we have something new to work with. Looking at the handout, you'll be able to print it on the next break. But if you got the handout, let's see what the handout is saying. It's going to give us an overview of this new plugin. Because this plugin has a few, um, several, several features that are not so obvious. So looking at number five here, this is handout number five, intro to the e-commerce plugin. This is reminding you again, and it's in the other handout, but it's reminding you, if you accidentally close your window and you want to get back to it, people, that's, this happens all the time. I close the window, how do I get back to my site? I lost it all. No, it's still there. You just need to go back to your web browser and type the address of your site. Obviously, if you type literally right now, localhost to WordPress admin, it will not work. Why, obviously? It's the file name. I don't have a folder in my WW folder called WordPress. I have a folder called 201705 16 no e-commerce. So if you literally type that, it won't work. And it should be obvious why it won't work. So if you're on the Mac, it's slightly different. And sometimes if that doesn't work, you can type these numbers. 127.0.0.1. Not an O, it's a zero. But this is how to get back to your site in case you close your window. You can, of course, also get back to it if you click on the little WAMP icon, and then you know you go to localhost and all of that. My project, my project right there. But if you don't remember to do that, it's in my handout. This takes you back to the back end, the dashboard. So installing, we did all of this already. We searched the plugin, we installed it. Jump, jumping to number six. You now have a new a few items in your dashboard. In the dashboard item, we have store upgrades and store sales. We'll look at all of these, of course. We also have a new products menu category. Guess what is there? All our products. We have a few new pages to display our products, the checkout screen, and all of that that's under pages. And then we're going to have settings store settings. So to reiterate that, if you click on dashboard, when you log into the dashboard nowadays, the first time you also have a new bo a few new boxes here. You have sales summary, sales by quarter, sales by month. This is all in the dashboard. Um, if you remember, you can rearrange all of this stuff if you want. You can turn these things on or off. Question? You can turn all of these on or off as, as you'd like and arrange them what's best for you. Current sales <laughs> zero, but eventually we'll add lots, of, lots more to that. <clears throat> Income, you can look up sales by quarter, sales by month. So nothing yet. It's not a real site. No one can visit it. But when it gets put live, you'll get data here. We'll also have a store... well, they changed it. I forgot to change it in my handout. Now it's called WP e-commerce licensing. This was the store updates. This licensing is for the non-free version of, of the plugin. This basic plugin that version that we have works really well. You'll be able to sell any kind of product, real product, virtual product, uh, goods and services. You'll be able to accept any credit card. It's very powerful for free out of the box. But extra features will require a license. I don't know the price at the moment. I think it's like $99 one-time cost and it gives you more more options. Yes? The license is for the front and the back. It's one license is attached to one website. One website. Now, would it require a city license or whatever you want to bring? Not really. It doesn't require any. It doesn't require any business license or anything really. This is your license to use 
the e-commerce plugin not to sell products. That's a different kind of license. This is just the software license to use the to use the the, the more powerful version of the plugin. Not really, actually. Uh, you know, to do it the most legitimately, yes, I would want to get CD permits and all of that, shipping permits and all of that, to do it the most legitimately, and file my taxes and all of that stuff. But really, technically, as long as I install this plugin and I turn on the payment feature, I can sell. I don't really even need to report it as income. Let me cut the microphone on that. <laughs> but you can do anything you, you want with this plugin. To do it the most right, of course, we follow the rules. To my knowledge, no, that's not what you're paying for. No, you're just, they're not going to pay to do that work for you. You're just going to pay to be able to use more features. Okay. Yes? Yeah, that was a thing. Remember back in the days we didn't have to pay any sales tax on anything. Uh, and then, well, that's a big revenue source that states were losing out on, so then now we get charged sales tax online. So in an event here, uh, let's go look at store sales, which is at the moment empty. But under store sales is where we would have all of our of our of our sales, what what we sold, the quantities, the customer, and all of that. This can be downloaded and exported, so your data can get taken off of the site if you want it. This is all being saved in the database we created earlier, the WordPress database. Last time we called it Kitty Cat, whatever you called it today, probably WordPress. But everything is being saved in the database. We can export. Um, let me make a little digression right here. Uh, e-commerce, let's see, WordPress with e-commerce. The big thing is, when you get into the part about becoming an e-merchant, you have to ask yourself a question. Uh, are you sure you want to become the next Amazon? Now, Amazon obviously is the biggest retailer on the web, and I ask people in the class, are you sure you want to become the next Amazon? Because if you think about how Amazon works, I go to Amazon.com, I search a product, I add it to my shopping cart, I put my credit card, I wait a little while, and then it shows up at my doorstep. So very easy. I pay for it, I get it at my doorstep. In the middle, a lot happens on Amazon. I put my credit card number in, and a bunch of bank stuff happens behind the scenes. They check, they check if you have funds, they transfer the funds, it's in escrow, etc. Then, okay, great, he, he's good for it, they charge my card. Then, when that's confirmed, someone in the, fa in the warehouse gets the item off the shelf. More and more nowadays, a robot gets it off the shelf, puts it on a conveyor belt, that goes off to the shipping facility, they pack it up, the post office picks it up, or UPS, or or whoever picks it up, ships it uh, across country, on a truck, on a plane, on a boat somewhere, it drops off on our local delivery station, someone walks to your door and drops it off. So there's a lot happening in the middle at Amazon. The reason I ask Rachel what you want to be the next Amazon is that now you have to take care of that. You have to take care of inventory. You have to take care of shipping. You have to take care of returns. You have to take care of all of the things that Amazon takes care of depending on your product, of course. So you have concerns. Inventory. Maybe I am an author, and I self-published my books, and I want to sell my books, but in the meantime, they're in my garage. So I need a place to store the inventory. I need data or a payment collection. I need a way to get the money. Credit cards, PayPal, checks, COD, whatever way you're collecting the money. You need some way to do payment collection, which then requires banks. 
and you have to deal with taxes, taxation. Are you going to tax your products? Are you not? Related to that is shipping. How are you going to deal with shipping? What does it cost for you to ship it across the country, across the city? There was uh, someone that I worked with a few years ago that she painted. She had really big paintings, like seven foot by seven foot paintings. She wanted to sell them online. That is a huge thing you have to put in a box to send across the country with insurance and all of that. So you have to think about shipping. And then, of course, terms of service, meaning did the product get to the person damaged? Is the person unhappy with the product? What are returns? What are all of these details of the terms of selling or service? One before you first. Yes. Or even 1099s and such. Yeah, now, yeah, exactly. this is why the question is there, because as we talk about a little bit this more, and some of us start to realize, I don't want it to be the next Amazon, right. then there are places we can go to, like <laughs> Etsy and um, eBay and such. So we're jumping ahead a little bit, but the short answer to that is, it might not be a good idea to do your own site, your own your own e-commerce site. You might just piggyback on one that already exists. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is often they take their commission for being the infrastructure that you need. We're creating our own infrastructure, everything from scratch. We have the complication of setting up the site and the database and the plugin and all of that. If I want to skip all of that and I go with Etsy or whatever, they're going to take care of that infrastructure, but they take a commission. So eventually the answer to, to this, are you sure you want to be your, the next Amazon? If yes, Great, we need to take care of all of these concerns. If no, we have alternatives. eBay, Etsy, etc. Yes? Um, could, could we do something like drop ship uh, another out of state uh, location? Would this help you track taxing or would the taxation would you have to deal with something like that? This is the, um, on a couple of spots throughout the course. I can only speak enough from experience. I don't have all the answers because some things like taxation, I'm not a tax pro, uh, professional. I don't know what to say about a lot of these things of taxes. We have other people on the team that deal with that. We have people that we can reach out to in the industry that can help us figure these things out. We can go over to, you know, the Better Business Bureau and they'll give us information. We can go to various, you know, local agencies that are there to help us with this stuff for small businesses. So I can't give you that full answer right there figuring those things out of taxation, but we can, I can teach you about the tools of how to use the tools and then figuring out your detail, we'll have to talk to the professionals. Yes? I do know that it's on the internet, the taxes are much cheaper, it would blow up by 20% if you start your business through the internet portal versus in the real world where it's 40%. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't know the whole details. So, but it's, if, if you do a business, an internet-based business, it's like the taxes. If you do the local tax person, it's cheaper going through the internet versus going in person like a regular brick and mortar shop and whatever. So that's good. Definitely, then everyone, if you don't have a tax professional, find a tax professional. If you've been doing it with TurboTax or QuickBooks yourself and all of that, it may be working. But really, this is why there are these professionals that will help us with all of this. So all of those answers will, will get dealt with better with someone that, that knows this. So look up in the yellow pages or wherever you find information to find um, you know, uh, uh, tax professionals specializing in e-commerce to get the best answers. So there's a lot of these concerns that are building up. And then we're getting into cybersecurity. Because with cybersecurity, we're dealing with 
uh, usernames, emails, home addresses, credit cards. Now obviously I'm thinking in terms of Victor's Bakery that I'm gonna sell cupcakes throughout the US. Physical product that I'm gonna ship. So I need people's home addresses. Okay, conversely, I am an author selling ebooks. I don't need a person's home address. I don't need some of these other personal information, but I'm gonna need their credit card to charge them to buy my digital product. For that ebook, I'm not gonna need to charge shipping. You, you don't ship through the cables. Taxation, uh, maybe. Uh, again, I don't know, you have to check a tax pro. But some of these things don't apply depending what you're selling. Goods and services, real and virtual. So I'm going through the scenario about real physical things to ship through the US. Your own scenario could change. But cybersecurity, now we're we're liable for this stuff. We're liable for people's emails and home addresses. Now we're collecting that in our database too. Obviously, if they're trying to sh buy something, we need to know their home address and that's going to get saved in our site. Um, and we need to be we need to uh, be cyber secure. So we'll talk about these concerns, of course, but this is all going into, again, the question about are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? Because then you have to deal with all of this. If yes, continue with the class. <laughs> No, then I won't take it bad, of course. But you might be better off with some other online uh, merchant and such. So continue with the class. If no, there's eBay, there's Etsy, and there's other ones. Those are the two off the top of my head. But Smug Mug, you know, there's all of these places. Uh, Redbubble, I just thought of a few ones here. There's all of these other places that you can go to sell products. Redbubble, for example, that, that one's interesting. That's a, a place focused on like uh, t-shirts and such. I have great ideas for t-shirts. I'm going to just upload my design to Redbubble and they're going to take care of printing the shirts, shipping the shirts, taxing the shirts, all of that. And I just get my cut, which is, uh, which is whatever percentage it is at the moment. It's like their loyalty? They take... Uh, they take their commissions, their royalty for doing it all, yeah, and you get your, your piece of it. So I have used Redbubble before, and I've sold a few, a few fun t-shirts with like HTML code and stuff. So there's some nerdy people out there that want to walk around with a t-shirt with code. <laughs> I, have I have sold a few of those myself. Uh, I haven't used Smug Mug myself, but some of my photographer friends are on there, and they sell their photos on Smug Mug. Now Smug Mug takes a little bit for the printing cost, the paper, the shipping, and all of that, but it's better instead of them having their stacks of photos at home, going to the post office and dropping it off, you know, and all of that. It's someone's a, someone's in the middle. Yes? Uh, for inventory, our site is a restaurant, mm -hmm. and the customer ordered 100 pizzas. Uh -huh. How we can manage that we had the raw material to accept it because it's going to pay and everything. I mean, that's that's how a good we point. Can get the feedback over inventory. We. That's a very good point. You're thinking that's interesting with the thinking about it in terms of pizza because then you have the raw materials. That's a good point. I don't quite have an answer for that. Be but under products, it does keep track of your inventory. If you write in here, you have pepperoni pizzas for sale, and, and you write that today we have 20 for sale, then you have an inventory of 20. If they try to buy 100, it'll say no more inventory. So there's probably a better way to keep track of the raw materials of your products, but at the moment, I don't have the full answer. This will, however, keep track of My inventory items. In the process of this inventory, maybe it's going to stop because if you order something that we haven't it, doesn't maybe go through to the email, credit card. It will stop. It will stop. If something is out of inventory, it can be set up to, to not proceed. I think that uh, 
especially on the food uh, website, is a time of delivery. Mm -hmm. If somebody orders something that they want it in 30 minutes, one hour, and it takes for your kitchen, prepare it in two hours, mm -hmm. so it doesn't go through. That That's out of the scope of the plugin. The plugin can't deal with that. The plugin will take your order and process the credit cards, and then now it's the chef's fault that it didn't get done. So the plugin can't handle that. So I don't know. In the time of preparing some items, it takes one hour. Mm -hmm. The customer wants in 30 minutes. Is there any way to stop? The you order? can. Yes, you can do that under the store sales, you will have here this things, open orders, closed orders, and you can cancel orders if, if you have to cancel. So you have that ability and then do refunds and everything. Are you referring to a pop-up? Like yeah, I mean, that can say the client. Yeah, the client, see, okay. The client said, I want this pizza in 30 minutes, but your kitchen is so crowded, you cannot you make it in 30 minutes. There might be a way. There might be plugins. Uh, most likely, there are plugins. I know there are plugins that can pop up to the person's screen at that moment. Although I haven't dealt with plugins that you know pop up depending on other factors. But probably there's probably a way to make a pop up to interact with the customer. Yeah. This is maybe very good for uh, made products like books. Features, yeah, pre-made inventory. Pre-made to yeah. pick up and give. I think so. So that's a concern there regarding, do I want to be the next Amazon? If you do, it's going to be the long way, but you keep more of the profit. If you want to do this other way, it's the easy way, quote unquote, and you keep less of your profit because you're giving your money to these other companies that are running the infrastructure behind the scenes. So this is one big reason why people want to do it themselves. I hear that all the time in my classes. I want to learn SEO. I want to learn SEO, so I took your class. I don't want to hire someone else. Great, everyone can learn SEO, but you'll also learn that it takes time and effort. I'm busy running my business. I don't have time. That's why I'll hire someone. People want to learn how to do their social media. What? Someone's going to charge me a hundred dollars a month to run my Twitter? I'll do it myself. So they learn it in my class, and then they do it, or they don't because they have no time. So if you don't have time, and if you don't have money, you don't have anything. You have to choose one of those two. Are you going to spend time to do it yourself, or are you going to spend money to have someone else do it? You have to decide that. Same thing here. I don't have money enough to pay my $100 a month account on Redbubble, let's say. I don't have that money, so I'll do it myself. We are seeing already in three weeks of this class what it takes to set ourselves up. And if, it, and if you're able to do it, Great, you're going to save a lot of money, but it's a lot of work. We see how we have these, uh, just a lot of steps to do. So that was my digression about that. We have all of these concerns. We're going to assume that, yes, we do want to do it ourselves. So we'll continue with our plugin. Um, the dashboard has a couple of things to look at. Let's go look at our products screen. We have a brand new product screen. We have no products. We'll create products later. Don't worry about it yet. But we'll have products, which of course we can add pictures and descriptions and videos and prices and sales and lots of great things. We'll be able to create categories. We will do this a little later. Victor's Bakery is going to sell cakes and cupcakes and cookies. Those are categories chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter cookies, uh, snickerdoodles, you know, the different kinds of cookies in a category. We'll look at variations. I want to sell t-shirts. They vary in size, large, medium, and small. They vary in adult size and kid size. So we'll do variations. We have coupons, pretty self-explanatory. We'll be able to give discounts either monetarily or percentage-wise under coupons. And we have extra features to extend the store to give us more capabilities, which most of them are not free. So that's the way of it is here. 
the way that it is with most shopping carts and such. So we'll go into products in detail a little later. Let's go back up to pages. Pages gave us some new some new commerce pages. We have products page, checkout, transaction results, your account. If you edit the product page, you don't really see anything. You don't see your products yet. You just see like a little placeholder. This is a short code. This once this once this this page is published, this will show your products and we will be able to group them by categories and by date and alphabetically and all of this setup. But there's nothing really we edit at the products page. If you look at the checkout page, there's nothing you edit there too. It, you, it's, it's on another screen. It's just a placeholder. Show the shopping cart on this page. And the other two are exactly the same. So you don't really edit anything here. Your account, transactions, checkout products. But I want to see them on my site. Remember that when we add any new pages to the site, they are not automatically added to the menu. So if I wanted to add those brand new pages visually to my site, we need to add them to the menu. Challenge yourself by adding the brand new shopping cart pages to the menu and check them out on the site. Try that on your own first and then I'll do it. Remember how to add a page to the menu. You might have to figure out how it appears on the screen, the menu. So take a moment to try to remember how to add pages to this menu. If you don't quite remember, call me over, but try to try to do it yourself first. That's uh, that's the default is products page. You can change it if you want. But it's not a page, it's a menu.
So now I've got the items up on the menu bar, and if I were to look at products page, um, there's nothing really to look at. There's no products. That makes sense. If I go look at your account, well, uh, there's no purchase history yet. Nothing has been bought. If I look at transaction results, which is like the checkout screen, well, there's nothing in the cart and all of that. So those, those pages are very basic at the moment because we don't have any products, we haven't bought anything, it's very basic. But what happens here is that we have a brand new set of pages that will display our shopping cart. At the moment, as we start adding products, every product will be added to the products page, um, which is cumbersome. I actually want a products page. Wouldn't it be nice that if I hover my mouse under products page, I get an item that says cookies, and another one that says cakes, and another that says pie. 
supplies. So each of those products would be in their own sub-item. We will do that a little later. But the idea is that by default, the products page has all your products. And I don't like that it's called products. I want it to be called, you know, goodies or tasties or shop. I want it with a different name. So you will be able to change, of course, your menu items to have a different name. We'll do that later. Uh, my handout had the overview that we have items in the dashboard, we have items in pages, we have items in products regarding the shopping cart. We're going to spend a little bit of time to look at one of the most boring aspects of the plugin, but one of the most important, which is the settings. The settings where we deal with the taxes and the shipping and the payment and all of that. So adding our products and the visuals of it, we'll get to it later, most likely next time. We're going to spend probably the rest of the day talking about settings and my advice for these settings to be able to sell products. Settings for the store are under settings store, just like my handout says. So let's go to settings store. That was not there before. I never had store settings, but now that I've got this plugin, I've got store settings. Store settings then gives me a new screen with a variety of sub tabs. I also get a couple of messages up there. I'll ignore them for the moment. Just, just ignore those messages at the top for the moment. But here uh, we've got these store settings, general, admin, etc. These things we should set one time properly and then we're done. We don't have to return to them very often. Some of them are very self-explanatory, so I won't mention every single item. And some of them I'll point out tips and such. So the base country, I'm going to assume most of us are going to sell our products from the USA. So scroll around here and find USA. Then it'll select what state. Now if you have some sort of like Delaware Limited Liability Corporation, of course, set it up however you have yours. But uh, I'm going to assume I'm selling from California. If you have special tax accounts and such in Utah, I don't know, you set it up. Some of these, you are going to be the best person to answer how you should set these up. Such as target market. At the moment, I can ship my products and I can be accessed by everyone in the world, all 200 and whatever countries. Well, I don't want to ship to, uh, I don't know, Marshall Island, so I can turn it off. I don't want to ship to uh, St. Lucia, so I'll turn it off. Whatever makes sense to you. Let's say I do want to ship to Canada, U.S., and Mexico. So the way I would do that is I would select none countries and turn on the ones I do want to deal with, to do commerce with. Question. So when you don't have a country selected, will you web page be advertised in that country where you don't want to ship to? Your web page? They know uh, that you won't ship to their country, but they don't want to see your site. If it, if it, goes, if it goes published on that country, in that country. Uh, they will see your site because any website can be visited by any place in the world. So even if I turn this off here, someone from Cameroon can still visit my site. Selling to them, that will be something that gets deactivated because Cameroon has a, you know, a, a monetary currency uh, that here I'm saying I'm not, that's not my market. So then I won't be able to, cam to accept the Cameroon currency. So they still will see something, but they won't fully be able to really buy. The viewer will know that they won't be able to order if you can to the Exactly, but it would also be good to be obvious and say we only ship to USA, Canada, and Mexico. Because, you know, what's obvious to me is not obvious to everyone. So if I don't, if I don't turn it on, Mauritania thinks I'm going to ship to them, I should say, we sorry, we do not ship to Mauritania. Yes? Yeah. 
what we what can be translated rather easily is currency. We'll see when we look at that. So currency is not a big deal. We can accept any currency in the world, basically. Translating the site to other languages? No, that one's hard. That one, there is no built-in plugin to do that because languages are so imperfect. If obviously, if I'm speaking the most proper English with all of the proper dictation, that's one thing. But if I'm talking in real life with real slang and all of that, that's a different kind of speech. So if we get a plugin that translates me to the Tuvalu language, who knows how accurate it is? You need some person to translate it, and that's not free, and that's not easy. So monetary conversation, conversion, easy. Language conversion of the site, not easy. So I've just selected the, the, these three countries. I'm going to ship to USA, Mexico, Canada. I turn those on everywhere else. Maybe next time. Keep stock in cart 4x. Have you ever visited a website like Amazon and you're going to buy something? Let's say something really cool and expensive and I'm about to buy it and I say maybe I should pay for the rent this month instead. Mm -hmm. So then I don't buy it and I close the browser and I come back after payday and then it's still in my shopping cart waiting for me to buy it. Yeah. That's this. How long should a person be able to keep your product in their cart before it gets removed and get, gets put back into inventory? This answer obviously is up to you. It could be hours, days, and weeks. A year, there's no year, but how many year, weeks are there in a year? 52 weeks, yes. So whatever day, how many hours in a year? So whatever you want to put there for the amount of time. Now the problem is that does take it out of the inventory for someone else to buy it. So then it's stuck in someone's car for a year, and you're not able to sell it. Now, it doesn't matter for something that I can create. We can bake a cake every day. If I've only got seven of those sculptures, it matters a lot. Whatever you want to put here is fine. Do you have a, do they have where you can remind them? So it's taking maybe like a month and then you have a reminder. That's one of the things we're going to see that for some of these more advanced things, the basic version of the plugin does not have it. But for the, remember we saw extensions for extra features? Uh, some of these extensions do give you those features. There's uh, another question. Do you have a question also? Nope. Okay, so next. Hierarchical product, don't worry about that. Default is fine. Currency, these are the currencies that default that I'm ex that I'm accepting, although I will be able to accept every other currency, as we'll see how later. But if the main currency I want to show on my site are the uh, is the Thai baht from Thailand, then uh, I have it there. Or the Udang shilling there. So the default, I'm going to go with US dollars. Where do I want to put my dollar symbol? The right way or the wrong way? You can choose there. How do you want to use your decimal places, the right way or the wrong way? You can change that there. Tracking. You allow tracking. Now, this is an extra feature for extra tracking. There will be the tracking built into UPS and such that we can use. But if you want more advanced tracking, we can turn that on. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, that's usage tracking. That's something else. Uh, anonymous tracking. Okay, no. I'm thinking of a different screen. This is, uh, will you allow the creators of this plugin to track anonymous usage of the plugin on your site? The default is no. You can turn it on, and it looks like they will give you a 20% discount if you do uh, allow the tracking. Yes? Uh, with the currency I know that's obviously the sign in the front, but if it was a euro, does it automatically, because someone purchased it from uh, anywhere in the switch to the URL on the other side? Just curious. Like, um, because if you have all those selections and you selected the country, I'm thinking probably they do that, or is it always going to be in the front? Since I've really only dealt with the with US currency, I, I don't quite have the answer at the moment. Um, even if it's on the wrong side of it, I think people will be OK. Well, I know, but I think it's just like respectful. I think it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume yes, but uh, probably 
probably it would make sense. Yes. Uh, probably, yeah. There, uh, everyone, uh, all of these questions about can it do this, can it do that. Most likely, there is because if I have that question, someone else probably had that question, so there probably is a plugin. Uh -huh. Is tracking uh, exactly uh, what does it mean? It's good for. Uh, it's only it's going to track the people that created this plugin are going to track your site to see how you use it to improve it, I guess. So it's putting no is perfectly fine. It will not affect your shopping cart at all, and putting yes will not affect your shopping cart. But it's just that the people that invented the plugin want to check how you're using the plugin, and they will give you a 20% discount if you do. Who, who's going to give you 20%? The people that made this plugin. Who had made this plugin? To you. To you. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if you click yes, you will get that discount, yeah. Any person of what? Because we have paid for this software. Well, you shouldn't have paid for it until you saw the discount. You will get 20% if you buy the plugin if you first activate this. So if we make any changes here, we're going to click Save. And then let's look at the next screen Admin. So admin screen are, are several important things to look at. Uh, these, uh, these first two ones only matter if you're selling virtual products. Let's say I'm selling my music as an MP3 file. Let's say I'm selling my ebook as a PDF, so digital. Let's say I'm selling digital things. These things here would only matter to you in that case. If I'm selling something cookies in the mail, this doesn't matter. Max downloads. This is saying someone bought my song and they have only one chance to download it. I can put here, of course, five or 50 or whatever. The reason why I may put more than one is, you know, a person bought my song, they, they downloaded it to their computer, then their computer crashed and they lost it they would have to buy it again to get another copy of it if they didn't if they didn't save it somewhere so i think one is too little sometimes things happen and people lose a file two or three is good or 99 whatever you want to put how many times will you let the person lose the file before they have to pay for it again again if they're going to buy a digital file uh, if we activate lock download IP, we're going to say you can only download the file from the computer where you bought the file. The IP address is your special address on the internet, your address on the internet. So uh, if I if I bought if I turn on the yes like this, I can be sure that only the person that bought it can download the file. The problem is, what if a person bought my song from my, from a friend's house? They have a different IP address. They bought the song on their house. Then they come to, they go back to their main house, and it's a different address and it's locked. They cannot download it from the other address. And IP addresses change automatically anyway. Maybe I'm always going to shop at home, but Cox Cable or Time Warner is going to change your IP address once in a while for whatever reason. So I would not recommend to turn on lock IP address. It's too strict. Mm -hmm. Wherever you bought it is the only place they can download it. That'll then cause angry emails at you. So to avoid that, just let people download from wherever. Mime type, don't worry about it. Default is fine. Store admin, you can have a different email address where you get messages when your inventory is low, when you've sold a product, when someone is going to do a refund. Because we have, we have an email address of the admin for general WordPress messages, and then we, have a, we could have a different email for shopping cart messages. Terms and conditions. This is up to you completely to type anything or not. 
But these are the terms and conditions that says you cannot buy this product until you click I agree to the terms and conditions. So let's say I am selling uh, baked goods and I'm going to put the standard disclaimer about allergens, right? Uh, you know, food is handled, how does it say handled? Handled in a fac facility, in a facility with allergens. So I'm, I'm putting there, you realize you're about to buy something where an allergens are in place. If they turn that on and they proceed, then they should not sue you when, you when they get sick. Whatever terms and conditions you want to put here, that'll cover yourself in whatever eventuality is in your business. If you don't know at all what to put here, what I would recommend is you can do a search for e-commerce terms and conditions example or template or generator and then go find one there's going to be plenty of them not for free and plenty of them for free uh, you can craft your one your own one of course you can have a lawyer craft one but that's optional if you do those t's and c's terms and conditions make it make it a good one so that you cover the possibilities to cover yourself Your customers will get an email with a purchase receipt. Who is the, who is it coming from? The name and the address. This is that you put here an email of yours that does exist. This is not that you're going to create one here. So let's say I have an account at GoDaddy. And so I brought, I bought an email account there, sales at victorsbakery.com. So this is going to send an email when someone buys my product. It's going to send an email to the customer, and it's going to come from sales at Victor's Bakery. And the sender name will say something like uh, Victor's Bakery Team. Obviously, you can do it like uh, Victor's Bakery at gmail.com. But again, you need to have an email account that exists here. You just don't put in an email address. It won't create an email. You have to have an email address. I would recommend the, the email like this with your domain that you purchase at a provider, not a Gmail address, not a Hotmail, not a Yahoo email address. That's not professional. You want to purchase the real email address like that. It's really funny when I see pretty professional looking websites and then it says contact us at john at gmail.com. That should be something more professional. Some, uh, some email accounts actually block uh, messages automatically from Hotmail and Gmail and all of that because anyone can create a Gmail account and any spammer and any hacker can. But if you purchased your name like that, that is more secure. This is the message that gets sent to the customer. You probably want to change this because it says, thank you for purchasing. The name of the shop will automatically appear. Any items to be shipped will be processed. Any items that can be downloaded can be downloaded from a link on this page. I'm not selling download stuff. I'm selling actual cupcakes. So I probably want to change that message or people will say, what do I click on? Can I download my cupcake? Mm -hmm. So I would change that. And any of that verbiage. This will automatically show a little chart of what their product was, the cost of shipping, and the total cost. And you can change that chart a little bit with the items up here. You can show what is their purchase ID, their order number. You can show what else. How did you find us? Question the tax. But that's the message that they will get when they buy something. Yes. Is that like a HTML type of message? Not really. It's a placeholder keyword, but it's kind of a code. HTML's code, and that's kind of a code. It's just their unique code. 
Yeah, leave it the way it is. It should work the best as is. If you want to change anything, and you you can try it, but leaving it, it works best. Okay, so here's the product tracking that I was going to talk about earlier. If you would like to uh, deal with more about shipping tracking and all of that, it's it's here. You set up the message that will get sent to the person, and it'll have a tracking ID with a link to UPS or whatever shipping method you have set up on a different screen. It will it will uh, it will produce the tracking ID based on when we set up shipping, because then shipping we can connect it. We will see to UPS and so forth. So I need to say we haven't any tracking ID. Exactly, no tracking item yet. And also in the back board, I'm looking at what happened in the back of stage mm -hmm. to prepare this order. This tracking ID also go to different sections. Yes, it will go into the dashboard store sales. All of this stuff will be saved there to retrieve it or to print an invoice or anything like that. Save changes at the bot. Yes. All of this. Yes, exactly. With our free e-commerce plugin. Yes. So all the invoices, all the payments, all of that um, will be archived on the e-commerce site. Do any will pay there uh, are for credit views? Yeah, exactly. It does not expire. It's there as long as you want it. If you go to plug in uninstall, yeah, you'll lose it. But it stays. Does the app um, plug in? No, uh, the amount of space for your sales and tracking and all of that is based on how much uh, space you have when you bought your Bluehost or your or your GoDaddy. That's so, so you end up needing more space and you can pay. You can you can pay for more and get more. Yes. And, and, and the the, uh, the app will tell you when you need to do that. Will you be a warning like that? The app will tell you, but most, but most likely your provider will tell you. GoDaddy will tell you, or Bluehost will tell you, not the, not the software. Most likely GoDaddy. They'll, they'll definitely tell you, because then you need to pay more. So they're always monitoring all these, or is it automatic? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's automatic, but they have it set up that it, it'll tell you when, when it needs to. Let's look at one more thing, and then we'll take a break. Uh, let's skip a little bit for the moment. Let's jump to import. This was the question uh, on the previous day. If we're going to learn WP Commerce, and then we're going to learn WooCommerce, what if I want to transfer between the two? We have import and export. So looking at the import here uh, for WP Commerce, what will happen here is that if we... If we uh, if we have something we're going to bring in from another plugin, we have the button to upload. And what it expects for us to upload is an Excel file, a CSV file, uh, basically a spreadsheet of, of, your, of your products. Because technically a database is just a glorified spreadsheet. A spreadsheet like this, rows and columns. I've got a row of a product. That row has a column of a name, a column of a price, a column of inventory, a column of a picture. That's a database. A spreadsheet is a version of a database. So this expects us to upload a file in a spreadsheet format of our inventory from the other, from the other plugins. And it expects it in this order, a column of product name, description, etc., etc. Here's an example right here. Banana, comma, the yellow fruit, comma, contains potassium, comma, 67 cents, comma, banana skewed, comma, 150 weight units, grams, and so forth. So this is what I said about it is possible to transfer from plugin to plugin, but it could be a little tricky. It could be difficult. How do I export it? How do I import it? It's in the wrong format. The columns are wrong. 
is what I said about my company has done this before where we exported uh, someone's a client's shopping cart from one system to another and it was complex we had to spend a little while massaging the data from one format into another to get it into the new database when that was done the site worked perfectly but it took the effort to do that Uh, to do the export, it's going to be on another screen. We have nothing to export, so nothing to look at. But on another screen with an extension, we can export this to import it into another, into another database, uh, into another e-commerce plugin. But I will say, pick the right one early on. It's going to be hard to go from one to the other. That's why we're working on a testing site that's not real, that's not on the real internet that we're not paying for, to figure out which of the two I want to do the simpler WP Commerce or the more complex WooCommerce later. And then you pick the one you want to work with and you stick with it. So let's take a break and when we come back we'll look at a couple of these other screens and then we'll start adding products. It's 8.35, we'll take a break until 8.45 and then we'll go on.